The City of London's skyline has been transformed in recent years by a cluster of new steel and glass towers. The latest of these is the Leadenhall Building, popularly known as the Cheese Grater, where construction is just finished, making it the city's tallest building. The view behind me, from outside the ancient Cheshire Cheese pub on Fleet Street, shows the Dome of St Paul's. The architects of the cheese grater designed the building's famous sloping profile in order to avoid obscuring this one of London's most historic views. In a trade-off for this new intrusion on the city skyline, the developer has created a new public square sitting underneath the tower itself, showing the steelwork which supports over 40 storeys of offices. And this is the City of London. Space is at a premium. It's such valuable land. It's all used. And it yet, during those key activity moments, it's one of the most vibrant and busy areas in the world. And providing an adjunct to space that could actually supplement what is essentially an immensely crowded piece of city seemed a fantastic gesture to make. But that gesture could only be made if we could then build taller than usual. Another factor shaping the cheese grater and other city buildings is timing. The cheese grater is not the only city tower under construction at the moment. The walkie-talkie, just a stone's throw away, is also due to complete in the coming months. Why the coincidence? Because both began building in the depths of the recession. It was certainly an interesting time to start building uh, here, but in many ways we felt confident that precisely because few other people were building, that we had the opportunity to deliver a fantastic product, a fantastic building. Developing in the historic city is difficult, expensive and risky. On average, city offices generate the lowest returns of any form of London office property. So why are developers so keen on building them? Some people think that city towers are, are, are a risky form of development. For British land, over the years, they've worked out pretty well. Aon, who, who one of our, the first tenants here, have actually moved their global headquarters from Chicago to here. And that's a great thing for London. It's a great thing for the insurance market in London. So it's going to attract not just insurance companies, though they, of course, will be important. We're so close to Lloyds of London here. But also, we'll, we'll, we'll end up with hedge funds, with money managers, a really nice global broad distribution. As a result, building high makes sense for investors. You, know, you get paid for taking risks in development projects and we were comfortable together that with the expertise of Oxford and British land and the quality of the asset uh, and our view on London that it was a risk that was worth taking. We think London is the global city. Uh, it is without a doubt our principal focus uh, in the world right now. We think it has tremendous long-term fundamentals. London's transformation into perhaps the world's leading global city is changing its face. Just 50 years ago, there were virtually no high-rise buildings. Going vertical has helped it to stay competitive. If you had told the city that they couldn't have tall buildings and that people had to go to Canary Wharf to find the buildings that they demanded, then why would people stop at Canary Wharf? Why not Frankfurt? Why not stay on stateside in New York? Whereas a place like the City of London with 2,000 years of trading history has a continuity of gossip. Businesses need gossip and the places to do it. And it is that that keeps the City of London vital. So what's the future for the city's skyline? And how many more towers will we see? The city probably won't be seeing a vast number of extra towers built on its skyline because there's a lot of space dating from the mid-80s and early 90s which needs heavy refurbishment. The next decade or so of development activity in the city will tend to be the heavy refurbishment of some of the earlier buildings. Although there's less space for new towers, the cheese grater may hold the title of the city's tallest building for just a few short years. One stalled development right next door is seeking a new financial backer. Known as the Pinnacle or the Helter Skelter, it would be 50 metres higher than the Leadenhall building. And whether it's built or not, London's status as a world centre will continue to shape the face of the city. Kate Allen, Financial Times, London.